What's happening guys, Mike here from Hammer Fitness again and I'm so excited to get into this cutting log just for you guys. I'm personally going to take you through one of my very own cuts and how I'm going to shred weight over the next eight weeks. And what better way to do it than just coming off the fat log that I did in three part video. If you haven't seen that already, start with video one. I'll include a link in the description. You'll pretty much see me getting fat over the past eight weeks. The idea behind the fat log was to show people that it's not just about eating healthy to lose weight. Not only that, but you can actually put on excessive weight eating healthy food and that's exactly what I did. As a matter of fact, I put on 11 kilos and it wasn't good weight either. A lot of it was fluid over excessive carbs and a lot of it was fat. So my aesthetics went downhill, my strength went up and I'm pretty pleased with that. But overall, I wasn't very happy with the results and it's definitely not the way to do it if you're trying to build muscle or lose fat, obviously, and that's exactly why I showed you, along with all the tips and motivation and the what not to do. So make sure you check that out first. But as for the next eight weeks, I'll be personally taking you through this eight week cut. I'll be showing you the ins and outs, the tips, the tricks, and everything else in between to make sure it keeps you motivated along the way. All right, so it's a very, very underestimated misconception that cutting is the hardest thing in the world or it's, it takes so much effort. I'm gonna show you the ins and the outs so you make sure that you don't miss a beat and you know exactly what to do the next time you face a cut and you wanna lose weight, okay? You deserve your dream body and you should know how to do it yourself. So I'm very pleased to be able to give you a free part video to make sure that you know exactly what to do. And what better way to show you exactly myself. I'll pretty much be giving you a log every single day with a few tips and a few things that I wanna get across to you to make sure that you soak in. All right, I won't be doing too much every day. I'll be showing you a few meals, a few tips, and then straight to the wanes to make sure that you see the results and that you actually see what I'm talking about is actually working. Right, I'm 100% certain that my methods work and it's not the only methods, but it's a very good indication on what you should go off when you wanna lose weight. On that note, make sure you jump across to our Facebook page to give that a like and even jump across, if you like, to our YouTube channel and subscribe to make sure you keep up to date with our weekly advice, tips and tricks and motivation. I cannot wait to help you get the body that you deserve. All right, stay tuned. All righty, so I've just changed all my stats. This is what we're left with. So my allowance is 3,277 calories, 197 gram of protein, 500 gram of carb, and 55 gram of fat. Now, I am cycling pretty much uh, over the day and week. Uh, if you want more information about that, go to the carb cycling blog on the website, hammer.fitness. Um, but yeah, so I'll pretty much be starting with 50, uh, sorry, 500 gram of carb, and then as the week goes, I'll pretty much be dropping it anywhere from 50 to 100 grams each day, uh, and then I'll jump back up to the 500 at the start of the week. All right, so I won't be uh, having my cheat meal until the end of week three. Four plans worth uh, that I'll be doing throughout the week. All right, so day one is gonna be Monday, Tuesday, day two, Wednesday, Thursday, day three, uh, Friday, Saturday, and then the last plan will be Sunday. All right, so what I'm doing here is actually carb cycling. Now, if you notice down here, I'm gonna change the day from plan one, to plan two, right, the macros will change, so carbs will go down, fats and proteins will go up, and again, carbs down, protein, fats up, and then the last day on Sunday, carbs will be at their lowest, and protein and fats again going right up. All right, so calories is always going to be sitting around about 3,200. Right, so that's what my diet is going to be looking like. In terms of food, Pretty much breakfast is going to be like a smoothie. Smoothie with some peanut butter on toast and honey and some eggs. AM snack, brown rice, mince, rice cake, lunch, another smoothie, a lot of greens and stuff, chicken and sweet potato. PM snack, chicken, sweet potato and broccoli. All right, so you can, as you can see, it's getting leaner and leaner, so I'm pretty much positioning my carbohydrates at the very start of the day. 
And then my evening snack is pretty much veggies and egg whites and eggs. All right, so the point of putting eggs in with the fats uh, is that I'm getting the protein throughout the night and the cholesterol in the egg fats or the yolk um, is going to help keep my testosterone levels up while I'm cutting. Right, so that's what my diet consists of and then the pretty much the macros or the amounts on each food is going to change to get those adjustments in macros. So one of my favorite sayings is if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Okay, so as you can see before I've written up a diet plan. All right, so because it's carb cycling, all right, carb cycling is quite difficult because uh, every two days it's going to change. All right, so you can actually do this maybe every couple of weeks, but to get the most effective fat burn, if you have time, all right, or if you've got, like, pretty much I'm in the gym every single day, so I've got the kitchen right out back. All right, so it's available to me, but if it's not available to you, literally any other way is going to work, but because I've got that access, I'm going to make the most out of carb cycling every single day and every single week. All right, so the diet plan is kind of changing every two days within the week. Now... Since I got my diet plan, I got all of the ingredients to make sure that I know what I'm getting when I go to the shops. I've written everything down. Excuse my handwriting, it is absolutely terrible, but I'm in a bit of a rush to finish it. All right, so here are all the ingredients. All right, so here are all the items that I need to buy from the shops. All right, so from plan one to four, I've written how much of each I need. Okay, and then I've tallied it up at the end. So now I know exactly what to get for the entire week. All right, and it doesn't even seem that bad. I don't think it's even going to be that expensive. Um, so, for instance, let's go to the broccoli. 2.3 kilo broccoli for the week. This might be a loaf of gluten-free be- uh, bread. Nine apples. <laughs> 18 carrots. I'm going to be able to have bloody x-ray vision by the end of it. Um, just over a dozen eggs. Four garlic cloves. And so on. All right, so you get the idea. All right, so this is a pure example of planning. All right, so you're not gonna overbuy or underbuy. You know exactly what you're doing. And if you literally just buy what you need, you're not gonna go get those Tim Tams and leave them in the cupboard for you to get tempted. Now, if you're living with a family, obviously it might be different because everyone else isn't sticking to a diet as strict as your one. All right, so like I said in my previous videos, you wanna pretty much pick your time frame. All right. Don't say to yourself you're gonna do it for three, four, five months. I would not be very happy if I was cutting for that long. If I was restricting my food for that long, I would get very cranky and I'd lose motivation pretty quick. All right, so like I've said in my other videos, get in, get out, plan it, do it to as, as strict as you can, and boom, done, cut, shredded, done. Taking my list of foods, making sure I get everything. All right, so failing to plan is planning to fail, like I've said before. So make sure you take your list, don't forget a thing, that way you can't screw up during the week. All right, make sure you cook everything. Cook most things and leave it in the fridge for up to three days, otherwise you're getting freezes. Otherwise you're gonna be cooking twice a week. And if you're on a budget, I would say you chuck in a crap load of almonds for your fats. Like nuts are going to accumulate calories very quickly. So yes, per not even a kilo, they're so expensive. But when you're on a cut, you don't need that many because you're going to accumulate your fats so quickly. Let's take a look at this quickly focuses. So 615 calories per 100 gram. Alright, so... You've essentially got close to 4,000 calories in this bag of $17. And they're pretty cheap and they're awesome fats. Nicely done. What the hell is a Hawaiian sweet potato? <laughs> sweet potato? Hawaiian sweet potato. It's like a pineapple had sex with sweet potato. Bam! Pineapple sweet potato. Hawaiian. So, what happens if you're going through the shop? and you want to get one of your products and they don't have your gluten-free muesli. Well, you freaking freak out, don't you? Now what the f*** do I do? My plan's f***ed. No, I'm just kidding. Got to compensate. Got to uh, take a look at the macros, see what fits. Alternatively, you could just go to another store. 
Now I'm shopping on a Sunday and it's 10 to 9. Just heard an announcement that the shop is closing. So, but yeah, compensate or another shop. Just gotta make it work. And yeah, I thought I found some, but no, whatever. Maybe I'll just have to buy it tomorrow. Make do. Good morning. So it is 5.25, I'm heading to the gym nice and early just to make sure I get my run in before the gym opens and yeah that's my cardio that I'm going to start pretty much every day for the entire 8 weeks pretty much just be running the block, I think it's only about 1.2k um, which I'll show you soon but yeah, I don't think I've ever been so excited for a cut Cannot wait to see what happens. This is my home away from home. This is the start of a new chapter for the next eight weeks. Doing a run every morning, 1.2k, get back to the gym, go for a skip, uh, about 20 minutes of abs. Uh, that'll, so that'll be every single day. And then my normal training will continue four to five times a week. Uh, so the, the weight training. So chest try, back by, legs, shoulders, arms. Uh, so here we go. It's been a whole year since I've done cardio. Let's go. Wow. So unfit. Couldn't even make that whole K. Let's take a quick breather. Start walking for a little bit and then pick it straight back up. Fuck goes to show what a year off cardio can do. My hammies are so tight. <coughs> it's like I've done like 12 sets of hamstring curl. Glutes and the lower back is unusually sore. I think I'm not used to that excess weight. Wow. 11 kilos excess weight is not worth it. On that note, the reason I'm doing it in the morning is it's kind of like a fasted uh, cardio session. So before any food, you can drink water. That's really good if you uh, have some water just as you wake up. So that's going to start your metabolism straight away and then uh, kick it off with a run. But I mean, cutting, you have to make work with you. Don't have to do it so early in the morning like this, but I've got a gym to open. And you know, I'd rather prefer running outside than a treaty. So it's a lot better for you anyway. But uh, yeah, just, you got to fit it in when you can fit it in. So if it's after work or even on your lunch break, just get that shit in. Make it work for you. Let me give you a quick rundown on my supplementation. So I'm pretty much going to be having BCAAs every day, all day. And this is the only one that sits right with me. It's a Amino Last by Aspari Nutrition. Watermelon is my favourite. But, got all these bad boys to start the morning off. I'm pretty much going to be dosing uh, these three, three times a day. Uh, so I pretty much have this one. Pretty much only got this one, apparently it uh, helps metabolize fat and keeps cholesterol in check while you're in a deficit. And I'll be having quite a lot of fats as well, so got this idea off Tim Ferriss with his PAG stack. Uh, it's almost using the, uh, some other ingredients within that, so it's the alpha lipoic acid. Uh, the EGCG, which is just green tea extract, so I'll pretty much be having about 800 milligram of that a day. I think this is one tablet, yeah. And Diamond Burn is going to be my choice of fat burner. So it's got your raspberry ketones, quite a bit of caffeine. So these are quite strong. I do have them at the gym as well. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be my stack for now. Um, yeah, some cool oil as well, one tablet every day. Making the smoothie. I'll show you the list, but I don't have it with me. But. Two apples, three carrots, I'm gonna put um, two garlic cloves in. You can see that, two garlic cloves. Still gonna have my gluten free toast and peanut butter and honey. But obviously, I gotta weigh that stuff now. i make sure I'm not going over my calories because the peanut butter can accumulate calories very quickly, so you gotta weigh that up. Mm -hmm. 
this thing is you think you're in and you're out and you're burning as much fat. It's actually amazing to see the difference of colour. So when you're trying to spare your calories, your know, calorie light foods, it's a lot fresher, like green, orange, colours of veggies. And when I'm trying to load the calories up, it's like a synthetic kind of brown, white. Right, so that's that something I thought I'd pull out. This is the kale I'm putting in. The last ingredient is the broccoli. I just can't bloody fit it in. So, this is my new smoothie anyway. Uh, it looks like absolute green sludge. Um, yeah, like I said, it's a new recipe I'm trying. It's got so much green stuff in it, like your spinach, broccoli, kale. Uh, it's also got your carrots, apples to sweeten it up just a little bit because, yeah, with that much veggies, you know, it's not going to taste that great, I guess. Uh, especially if you've got hardly any water in it, which I didn't because it almost doesn't fit the amount of content I need in that shaker. But yeah, thought it was going to taste like absolute crap. So I'm kind of sitting there drinking it like, uh, uh, it tastes pretty good. So it does. Uh, as long as you chuck some sweet fruit in there, it's all good. I also put, uh, I think I put too much ginger in. Put about a thumb size of ginger. Someone wants to tell me the right amount to put in, that'd be great. But, uh, yeah. Ginger and two cloves of garlic was my go for today. And, yeah, if this doesn't give you a fibre... I do not know what will uh, because it, you can just taste the fiber. It feels like, I'm not going to say sand, otherwise you're going to be put off it, but <clears throat> you need your fiber, uh, especially if you're on such a high dose of protein. If you don't have your fiber, when you consume so much protein that you'll most likely need in a cut, well, guess who's getting blocked up? That's right, you. So, fiber up and protein up, cut away. I think one thing that I'm gonna miss are my vanilla lattes. Just went to the cafe then and I had the previous cu uh, customer laugh at me. She's like, is that yours? I'm like, it sure is. So, short black, if you can have your coffee short black, I mean, no sugar, no milk, go for it. And if you can't, well, you might have to give up coffee. Um, you can definitely accommodate with like almond milk, definitely a lot lighter, but I'd, I'd recommend cutting out milk. Uh, I personally think it's a waste of calories. You can definitely get your calcium from greens. And yeah find a better way to use those calories especially for your luxury coffee um, and even save that for your cheat day when you get it um, or cheat meal if it's in the morning I guess or lunchtime or whenever you have your coffee and when you want to splurge on that food those high calories but yeah for me short black so if you're carb cycling I definitely recommend cooking up batches of whatever food that you're actually using so like my mints that I have every day uh, I'm actually going to well my sister's cook this but I'll cook it in batches to large amounts so when that when it does come to changing the serving size each and every time you can just scoop it out chuck it in weigh the right amount uh, and then microwave it right, so instead of your normal cut, uh, if you're having the same thing every single day, you can pretty much prepare all the food throughout the week in your individual containers. So, if that was the case, you could maybe have like your mint or rice and whatever else you're having in the one container. You can literally chuck it in and go. Uh, it's also going to come down to time, but like I've said before, this is the most effective way to cut carb cycling every single day uh, or every two days. days is going to change, all right? But this is what it takes a lot of preparing and planning, all right. Like I've said again, failing to plan is planning to fail. Now, I want to make a very good point. You have to prepare, organize, 
try to get as many containers happening as you can. You want to make the preparation process as easy as possible. You want nothing to stand in your way of you losing motivation because it took too much time or it was too hard. All right, so get containers, even like pre-prepare all your stuff. Like I have my garlic cloves and my shake in the morning, so I'll peel all of them. So I literally just chuck them in. Um, everything else in containers. This is the fridge. So everything is just ready to go. And if it needs to be weighed, it's in bulk containers like this one. So that's my broccoli. And then really just jump over to the scales, chuck in what I need, and off I go. Done. No, it's a, can't kind of really blame it on time. Whatever works for you, right? Just make it happen, even if you have to change the food because uh, for some reason at that time you can't have a microwave. Um, even if it means having it cold, you might have to sacrifice that. But yeah, so prepare, organize, keep it tight, keep it clean. So, already one week down. I've got to say, at week three, I was very uh, angry and hangry. Yeah, it pretty well, it wasn't good, it wasn't pretty. But on that note, you gotta understand that your body's getting into the change, okay? So a lot of things are gonna happen. You might feel really hungry and you might get a bit angry because you're hungry and you're taking out a few of the things like sugar and if you're like me, dairy, and that may tweak a few hormones and different placements in your brain. So obviously that tweaked me off a little bit and don't get me wrong, it's not like I don't get hungry, but you will get used to it and your body will get into the groove of burning fat. If you can burn fat efficiently, you're going to excel in the way you feel. Okay, you're actually gonna feel a lot better. Your body is actually more efficient when it's using the fuel fat. All right, so if you can stick to your diet properly and if you can burn fat efficiently, you're going to feel better. All right, the only time that you actually feel terrible is when you stuff your diet up and you go for that treat or snack, all right, just to satisfy your taste buds or your brain at that moment. That's when you stuff up because it's gonna cause something to spike up and drop down. Just like an addiction, you're gonna to wanna to get it again and you're gonna feel like crap. And if that keeps happening, you don't wanna to stick to your diet. All right, because it's very unmotivating, you feel like crap all the time. All right, so stay true to your diet. Now, this is week one results. All right, so I left off at 115 kilos. I'm already down three kilos. Now let me explain. Three kilos almost sounds a bit too much. All right, but it's not all fat. All right, so my diet leaving off the fat log at 6,000 calories, I was eating 1,000 carbs a day. All right, 1,000 grams of carbs a day. Now because of that, carbs actually retains onto a lot of fluid. Okay, so week one, I think about a kilo and a half was definitely fluid. And maybe about a kilo or a kilo and a half was probably fat as well. All right, so sitting around about 17% when I left the fat log, or at the start of this video, now I'm sitting at 16%. So already 1% drop, which I'm absolutely wrapped about. Already my veins are, Kind of coming back, I think, just because the fluid's actually not in my skin uh, externally from my muscles. Um, if I pull down my stomach, I can see a little bit of abs, but that's about it. Other than that, still a bit podgy. I'm still sitting at about 112, but this is what we have. And still to see the results, we've got seven weeks left. I'm so excited to continue helping you guys and keeping you motivated along the way. All right, week one. Hope you liked the video guys, jump across to our YouTube channel and give that a subscribe to keep up to date on our weekly motivation and tips to help you on your weight loss journey. Also take a look at the videos down below for some humour, some laughs and some free workouts and more motivation. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video.